മധുഹൂന സല്ലി അല റസൂൽ ഹിൽ കരീം അമ്മാബാദ് അലഹമില്ല അള്ളാഹ് സുബാനു വാല ഹെസ് ഗിവൻ എസ് കലക്റ്റീവ്ലി വെരി ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ടു ബി മു അല്ലി മീൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഖുറാൻ സദ പ്രഭു സല്ലാഹു അലൈ വസ്ലം സലി ഹദീത് ഹൈ റുക്കുമൻ തല്ലമൻ ഖുറാൻ വ അല്ലമ ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് യു ആർ ദോസ് ഹു ടീച്ച് ദ ഖുറാൻ ഹു ലേൺ ദ ഖുറാൻ ദ ആഫ് ടീച്ച് ദ ഖുറാൻ So in some aspect of the other, we have the ability to teach the Qur'an directly, the words, or the ma'ani, or the ahkam, or the ala, the tools via which the Qur'an can be understood. So we should give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thanks comes in many forms. And one of the greatest forms is shukrun amaliyyun, where a person physically, he does shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the rights of that responsibility, and by teaching the Qur'an, and teaching this ilm of the Qur'an. In a way that it's supposed to be taught, or should be taught. <clears throat> so, before uh, we go into anything, somebody may ask, who are you? And what gives you the authority, or what qualities, or what qualifications do you have to, be, uh, to come and lecture us, or give us advice, or tell us how to teach? The first thing is, I'm not here to teach anybody, lecture anybody. It's a matter of just... Throughout my teaching career, I've been teaching for about 15 years now. So, whatever I've learned, or more importantly, what mistakes I've made, if I can share those mistakes with you, so you don't make the same mistakes, it would save you, save you 15 years of, of uh, experience. Bits of it I can share with you. So, as I said, it's not some kind of, I've done some kind of scientific research, and this is the, the absolute truth of how it must be done. It's just certain I picked up, my opinions that I'm expressing. So, if you... You've got your own experiences, you, got, you disagree with anything I say, you think, no, this is not something that... Then feel free to disagree or give your own suggestions, your own experiences, something you can bring to... Which I can learn from you as well. As I said, Manana said, can you come and give a teaching course? I said, I can't do a teaching course, I can't have a muzakara, a discussion. We ask what we all do, we discuss things and we come to a better conclusion. <clears throat> and have I had any training? Absolutely not. So, it's something called Jahil Murakkab. So hopefully I'm Jahil Basit, not Jahil Murakkab. Jahil, jahil Murakkab is when he's Jahil and he doesn't know he's Jahil. You're ignorant, you don't know you're ignorant. And Jahil Basit is you're ignorant and at least you know that much that you're ignorant. So hopefully I've reached that level, I'm Jahil Basit. That I know that I don't know and I need to learn. So hopefully that, uh, I've reached that level. And uh, where did my journey begin in teaching or trying to ex- understand this teaching? Was, uh, once I was given the job to teach a doctor So he was a, he's a, he's a convert Yeah, he's a convert And I was teaching him Urdu So I was teaching him And how I thought I oh, just trying to teach him Urdu And obviously Urdu was one of the important subjects So yeah, he was a doctor So obviously he's been trained in, uh, he, actually did, he actually does this, he does lectures and everything So uh, young, teen, young 21, 22 year old Trying to teach him Without any experience or Without any te- teaching uh, Training You could see the disaster that happened there. Alhamdulillah, so one day he came and uh, he was like, he was just sitting, it was just two of us in a room. So he was sitting in the other, in a, like, you know, in another seat and he was like really like red and hungry. Like, what's wrong here? What's going on today? So he said, Mom, he said, do you have any experience in teaching? I said, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a friend of by some time. I said, well, I've been doing takrar and that kind of stuff for the last six years, so that's my experience. <coughs> and he kind of, In a very stern way uh, Told me off Obviously, obviously he did it So he talk, kind of told me off Or he kind of just told me You know what You do not teach You come in in class I'm asking you Why is it Allah ne asman paida kiya Zameen paida ki Why is it kiya Why is it ki Why is it different And you're saying I don't, You don't know He doesn't The Udu doesn't have rules Or you're saying all this kind of stuff And you know Look for the thing I said look I, I was a bit shocked and I, But I was willing to learn So I said well, How would you do it And he didn't, he said, look, he got paper and he said, this is what you would do, you prepare a lesson, you have like this and And then kind of shook me up a bit And then after that, I went, I went, uh, I came across a book, I went town once and I saw a book By Jeff Petty, it's a really good book, Learning Today And then I started reading that book And then from that, that kind of opened up my eyes on a lot of things And from there then, obviously when you start, when you relate to Jahil, so that's Jahil Murakkab stage But I didn't even know it was Jahil And after that you became Jahil Basit, where you realize, you know what, I got a lot to learn So after that, you pick up things as you go along. Just everything, everything, every, everywhere you see something, you just try and pick it up. So, as I said, the qualifications, I have no official qualifications. But 
I've been making mistakes for a very long time, for probably more than you guys have been making mistakes. So I, I can share those mistakes with you so you don't make those mistakes. That's one for the qualification. Whatever, wherever I've been on this, wherever I read, wherever I, any useful videos, any little clips, I pick those up and make notes on those, trying to, so dust that other thing. I got Amazon Prime subscription. I don't know if that counts as qualification, so I buy some books. Might work. I watch some YouTube videos, so I don't know if that's really qualification. But anyways, so those are, that's honest. So anything you see here, it's just my experience. But sometimes what happens, you don't have to have the exact word. Manana sent me a word that we should discuss. What's it called? After you finish, you have this... Uh, CPD. CPD. I was like, oh no. If I, if I ask about CPD, I'm like ignorant. So I just Googled it quickly. I said, yes, yes, I agree with that. So I didn't, but you believe in the concept of CPD, but you don't know the word called CPD. So sometimes what happens is when you, when you have a passion for something, you pick up things not knowing the official terms for it. I, got, I have some family uh, overseas. They're in business. And if you ask them what's gross profit and net profit, I don't think I can tell you what gross and net profit is. But they know... They don't know the terminologies, but they know what it is. So when you, that's a passion for business. So that's how it is. When you have a passion for something, you, you pick up stuff. Okay. Uh, I don't know how, I'm, I'm just talking generally. So a lot of things that I'm saying here may not apply to you. You might be more advanced than, you're, you're from London, so town, town people, so you're more civilized and more cultured than, than us from Leicester, from the country. So, but just a few, as I said, all these things are just certain things that have happened. It may not apply to everybody, but just little stories here and there. It kind of gives a mindset of different people, good, the bad, the ugly. So this is recently actually, uh, it happened this, last week. So I said to somebody, oh, we're starting on Tuesday, but we have an inset day on Monday. So you guys are a bit more advanced, you have inset days a lot. So he said to me, oh, you mean chai pani? So, I mean, I just laughed it off as well, but it kind of shows in you know, our mentality that we haven't even got to that stage where we think, you know what, inset day, what is it supposed to really be about? It's really about learning, about teaching, about preparation for the whole year. So him was like, oh, just chai pani. So an inside day basically means you come in one day before everybody, you have a big party for everybody. The same way, end of year you have a party, you have a party one day before. So everybody's not like that. I'm saying this is just like, so sometimes we have that mindset that we don't realize that we need to learn this. There's the purpose behind of this. And just by knowing is not teaching. Knowing is one thing and teaching is another thing. And they're two different qualities and skills that you need to acquire. Okay. So, uh, Hopefully, I don't know how, I'll try to do as much as I can possibly But again, you can't teach everything and you can't discuss everything When you get certain ideas, then you can just add on and You get principles and fundamentals in your mind You know, okay, this is how it works And you can add on all the little juice iyat and all small little bits and bobs at the end So, the way I look at it, a madrasa is made up of three fundamental elements You have the teacher The teacher, the students And you have you can say the administration, you have the staff collectively, the culture within the teachers. So these three things is what make up a madrasa. And any of, all three of these elements need to be analyzed and looked at and worked on and developed. So first of all, I would like to discuss the teacher. All of us are teachers here. How different aspects of our teaching, how our, our mindset, our approach, our delivery, our preparation. So... I'm not going to go through this. The first one is intention. Everybody knows the hadith of intention. You've probably heard it in the Durus of Bukhari many times. And I'm not going to. So, in the Malamalu bin Niyat, your amal are judged by your niyat. I was reading a hadith, a uh, saying of Abdullah ibn Mubarak yesterday. He says, Rubba amalin sagh, Rubba amalin qalilin, tu kathiruhun niya. Wa rubba amalin kathirin, tu saghiruhun niya. Sometimes you have a very small or a very less amount of amal. But your niya is so vast and so sincere, has such good intentions. That it makes the, it makes the uh, reward multiple. Sometimes you have such large amounts of actions or such a large action, but because the niya is not sincere or the niya is spoiled, the value of that go- is, is diminished. So if in our teaching we have the right niya to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to uh, safeguard our children, to our future, pass on the knowledge of it's, there's so many niya you can make. I'm not gonna go to this, this discussion, you guys are more knowledgeable about than me regarding this. Uh, the next thing I want to, I want to uh, mention is regarding our mindset. I've got examples, because I'm te- I teach in Darul and this, this is what I prepared for our, our teachers in our Arabic course, but it applies everywhere. We tend to have an approach where we have a pyramid structure. We believe that our progress is like a pyramid. So any of you who've done the Alimiya course, you, will, will, you appreciate this pyramid. We just think of it that if I'm teaching Asan Nahwa, I'm teaching Tasirul Nahwa, I'm the low teacher. And the ultimate peak and the Siddhatul Muntaha of all teaching is Bukhari. I'm not saying that Bukhari is not a virtue. It's very difficult to teach Bukhari. No, no, no. But you don't think of it as a, as a pyramid. And if you're teaching Hivs class uh, or you're teaching 
this alif ba that, that's it you, you don't, think, don't don't think of it like that you will never you will never you will never progress i, I said look you know what you need to do think of it like this you need to think of it like you need to think of it like this as a tree and every science you're doing is a branch and without any branch that tree is incomplete you can't teach bukhari unless you have a good maktab so if, if you're a teacher and you know that I'm teaching maktab You don't have to think, okay, well, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just a really insignificant person I'm teaching Alif Bata Why do you specialize in that? You can Check We do the Nurani Qaeda, we do the Qaeda Baghdadiya We have the Safar Academy book Or you have, what other books? Asun Qawaid or the, whatever you have well, What about the Arab world? What do they use? Is there any different system in the African countries? Is there a different system in Asia? Is there a different system in South I, I, you get what I'm trying to say? So, so you, could, you could, if you're teating Alif Ba'a, you're teating the Takhti, you're teating the, the, the Harakat and all of that Just expand on that Specialize in that, so you could say, well Even this I can, I can it's not that I can't do Mutala, I can't learn more because I'm teaching a very You can expand on that And learn, well maybe the, the system somebody else has been using somewhere else Or maybe our system is better, now I know why it's better I'm not saying you have to change something, I'm just saying that Expand Search Look for something Don't just think, oh I'm not under pyramid, so I, there's no point, I can never Really get much knowledge. Think of a branch. Every single, every single field, whether it's fiqh, whether it's hadith, whether it's teaching makta, whether it's teaching school, everything together, whatever you do, you can make your own personal progress. If you have the the, 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 the pyramid mindset, if you get stuck at the bottom, you're gonna, you're gonna say, oh, I've this book for so long, so it's gonna be boring. Or whatever you do, just think of it as a tree, and I can prosper in, the, in, in this field. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Another thing I also have to appreciate is that we all have different abilities And it's a fact I don't think if I tried, I can become a Qari And so don't even offer me to put me for Maghrib Salah, okay? That'd be embarrassment for me Because that's not, that's not, I've never spent enough time practicing when I was younger So my vocal cords and then my harsh Barbadian accent together is not really going to make a good Qari So that's my limitation, I know that But it doesn't mean that I can't do something else Abu Dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding him Ma aqallati al-ghabara wa la adhallati al-khadara Min rajulin astaqa lahjatan min Abi Dhar Abi Dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He's simply is one of the most pious people you can come across So his, he had ability and his taqwa was unmatchable But yet at the same time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised him That whatever you do don't become a judge between two people That's not your feel Your temperament, your ability This is your... Your, the way your, your makeup is, that's not your job So you have taqwa, you can do so much In that field, but in, not in terms of this Social is not, social is not your skills I'm not trying to say anything bad about it it's a, it's a fact On the other side, we had Khalid bin Walid Now we think of Khalid bin Walid He was a new Muslim But Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, He became Muslim when After the Hudaybiyah Which is after 5, 6, 7 Hijri So at 7 Hijri, he's a new Muslim Because Hazrat Bilal radiallahu anhu brought Islam Before 7 years, before Hijri what would the Prophet sallallahu say regarding him? So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went to Hudaybiyah to do Umrah He met his brother Walid bin Walid was a Muslim already So he said to his brother, where, where, where is Khalid? Ma mithluhu yajhalul Islam Khalid bin Walid is a clever man, how can he not understand Islam? I know he knows what it is What happened was Khalid bin Walid left when, when, when they went to Hudaybiyah When they met for the Umrah Qadha They couldn't take it like, It's so painful to see somebody Like you know, just they doing Umrah uh, In our city there was an agreement in Hudaybiyah that you, you go back this year and come back the next year So next year when the Muslims came back so A lot of them just left Makkah, they said we're going to go out, we can't just take it It's too much to bear So Khal- Khalid bin Walid left as well So the Prophet said this to his brother That he understands Islam, I know him, Khalid bin is a good person, he's got talent And the last part was If he was to bring Islam قَدَّمْنَاهُ ala غَيْرِ We'll give him preference, why? Because Khalid bin Walid is a master in, 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 in battle, battle, in warfare So he's a new Muslim but I know his talents So everybody got different talents so everybody can't be a head teacher, everybody can't be a qari, everybody can't be, can't be a hips teacher, everybody, everybody you got, you, within your talent that you have, you can excel in that. And if you have that mentality, a pyramid mentality, there's only one way up. The only way I can become something really good is myself to become the head teacher, do a coup against Mona Sohil. That's not how, that's not how it works. Whatever you have, if you're trying that coup, wherever, 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 wherever you try, wherever you feel you are, master that. And if you have that mindset, you can, you can go so far. So that's a, that's, a bit regarding our, that's a bit regarding our mindset In terms of preparation, it's very important Pre- Preparing Preparing for the book, preparing for the lesson Preparing 
to teach. There's two things, because most of you are maktab teachers, so many of the books are very easy. There's nothing like, if you, have, if you have an Alim class book, an Arabic book, you have to go through the book, the Arabic, the structure, the grammar, the Arab, the, the dictionary, vocabulary, but you've got an English book. There's nothing too difficult within that book itself. But make sure you understand the book, even if it's fiqh. Simple, you've got Ta'alim al-Fiqh. You don't Ta'alim, what book do you need fiqh? Ta'alim al-Islam, what you have there? The Safar series. So you say, oh, the four, the four fellows of Wuzu, what should I do research? Why do you do research? Is that, is, is, so you've done, you've taught it one year, yeah? If you teach it every single year, you get bored and it's passive, you come in class and actually it's every year. But you can also expand your muta'ala as well. Research. What is it by hand? Is it ikhtilaf in the, in the, in the amount of the hand? Research must masail or nail polish. Research, different masail, even though you, you don't have to say everything to the students, they get confused. But you yourself can improve. So you can master the science. You can, so it might be simple masala of uh, what you're doing every single year. A kids' book. You can do kids, you can teach a kids' book, but you can do adult mutala. Do your own research. So master the science, not only the book. Okay. All the main other books in that topic. Obviously, it's, 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 is there any videos available, any audios available, any other research available, any fatawa available? You teach the aqidah. So fine. You, the aqidah mentioned in, in the books that you're going to teach. But what are the questions that are raised against this? Oh, a bit of a warning, if you're not yourself grounded, don't go looking for questions where you yourself get into doubt or you get confused. But if you are, you've got some kind of backing, support, knowledge, maybe find out the questions that, that people pose in schools, in universities, the atheists posed. Now, you may not have to pose them to the kids because you don't want to confuse them, but you can answer them without them knowing a question. For example, ask the question of determinism, taqdeer. So that's, that's something that's raised. Like another question you have is, if God can do everything, can God create another God? So you don't have to raise that question, but you can say, well, this is a common question that is raised. So before they, 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 you understand, so no, you don't have to just teach the book alone. You, you, you focus on the book, but you are aware that if a student asks you a question that, oh, my, in, in school we had this issue, or what teachers are atheists, they said this. You are aware, you get stumped in class. So as I said, any book you do, you can master that science. You can, you can teach kids uh, aqidah, and you can still master aqidah, which is enough to combat atheism. atheism. But have that, if you have to have that ambition, that I'm not just going to suffice, I'm not going to look at who I'm teaching, look at myself. Yes, don't give them all of, don't start giving all these long descriptions to the students who confuse them, but for your own personal development. Okay, as I said before, methodologies and other systems. You didn't hear class for your whole life. Fine, no, no, no. But why don't you be more ambitious and say, well, okay, most of us, I think, from the subcontinent. So the Indian subcontinent, India, Pakistan, we teach like this. His. Does everybody teach like this? Is there a different way of teaching? We use our uh, South African Mus'haf, 13 lines. What are the other Masahif? Are they slightly different? Do you have any benefits of those? You can't really say. In anything you do, you can say, well, just expand. And this is how you can become so... Like, for example, I'm not, I don't know, but personally, like, if you look at a talk, who's, who, who are the famous, anybody famous in, uh, in the UK is either going to be Mufti or Shaykh Hadith. Because you know, say, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a master in uh, principles of usul. He's a master in uh, principles of hadith. He's a master in history. He's a, you have a few now, I think, in atheism becomes a big issue. So now, quite a few scholars are branching out into, into aqaid. You get what I'm trying to say? So, in anything, anything you do, try to master, don't, don't, just, be, don't uh, just suffice on that. Try to, you personally, you develop and master what you're trying to do. Okay. Making notes is also very important. Because you're teaching for so long. If, if you, let's say, for example, you have a, you have a book. You read something. Now it's not worth, you can't read the same book every year. But if you highlight, you make a note, then what happens? You have that, you know, for example, this book I've read in Aqidah, I'm teaching Aqidah to the kids, a very basic book. It's got three important points in here on that page. So next time you go through that book, you just know that you have highlighted that these three points are very important. You don't need to now go and read the whole page again, it saves you time. So now, if you, for example, you're going to, so every year you read a new book on Aqidah, so in 10 years' time, you've read 10 books on Aqidah properly, and each year you can refer back to them because you've highlighted the main points, anyways. Or you got them on, on your. Uh, Dropbox, or you got them on your OneNote or your Samsung Note, or whatever, whatever you want to use. I'm not here to promote any particular brand. You get what I'm trying to say? So you, you, it, may, it makes it easier for you. Okay, it saves, it saves you a lot of time. And when you keep notes, you can develop. It, and I, what happens now? You invest a bit of time today, you save a lot of time tomorrow. But taking notes is difficult, isn't it? Is it? For example, you come in class and you say, okay, you come in class and you say, oh, I'm teaching the times of salah. You sit down, you draw the sun, and then you say, this is a hard time, also time, and you draw it and you erase it again. But if you spend a half an hour at home, I made a PowerPoint or some kind, I've done something, and you had that same, and it's saved. Next year, that would have already been there. 
And then following year you think, no, I can make this a bit better And year by year, the notes get better, your cheating gets better, you develop So it's very, very important So you spend a bit of time You spend a half an hour today, this year Next year you save that half an hour Next, ne next year, you can probably do some other research So it's very important, it saves you a lot of time Okay uh, Teaching One thing you have to remember, that mostly, generally speaking Teachers are, were usually from the top Or the cream of the crop in their class usually Because those, those who are struggling in class They're not going to teach because they don't understand it themselves and Not in a bad way, but that's how it usually works In all fields, Islamically, even in universities Only, what happens? Who teaches? Those who are good academically Now when you were, when you were, when you were in school, madrasa Anywhere you were teaching, what happens then? That was a very big bonus for you That you were, you were clever, you clock it when you're teaching, that's the biggest problem So it's a bit of a, it's called an oxymoron Or a kind of a, it's called an oxymoron Or it's one of those, uh, like it's, it's kind of like contradictory To be a teacher, you have to be good so When you're good, what's it called? Paradox So, when, when you, you have to be good to be a teacher But when you're good, then you're not a good teacher Why that, why does that happen? Because You automatically know stuff It's easy for you, you understood it Now you have to come down into the minds of the weakest student in your class to figure out what difficulty he or she is going through to be a good teacher. If you don't, what happens then is you, everything you say just goes over their head. Because you think, oh, this is easy. I've done this. What's so hard about this? Why can't I understand? Because you were taught it was easy for you. You didn't understand. You didn't struggle. That's so why sometimes some of the best teachers are those who were a bit not top of the class because they understood this is very difficult. Those who were clever was like. I can't even understand that There's, uh, there's this I, I remember hearing about uh, I think Kevin Keegan So he, when he became coach He was a horrible He was a brilliant football player I never noticed before my time I'm not that old But when he was a coach He was a horrible coach And some people who coached him Said that he was a bad coach But he just couldn't figure out Why he can't do this It was so easy for him When the people weren't training properly Or they couldn't get the things done He wanted done He just couldn't understand why not The same thing uh, if, if Kevin Peterson in cricket There was a, there was a thing saying that same thing uh, He said himself said that I never fail. So when I never fail when the sh when lost form or getting out. So I never had that problem. Maybe once in a while I would always score a run. So when a batsman is struggling, I don't know what he's going through. So I couldn't empathize with him. So I was a horrible captain. And he mentioned a few other points. So in life as well, if you're not able to put yourself in that person's feet, not feet, in his shoes, you wouldn't be able to be a good teacher. That's very important. And just knowing is not enough. If you, if you have a lot of knowledge, you can go and write Or you can go and do your own research But for you to have that, for that nafa, that benefit of that knowledge to pass on to others You have to be able to communicate that in the right way Knowing is not teaching Knowing and teaching is different So your knowledge will only benefit somebody else when you are able to learn how to communicate your knowledge to somebody else You have lots of knowledge and you can't communicate that either in writing or in speaking or Then that knowledge will not benefit anybody else so that's very important as a teacher especially to learn communication, learn these things. That's why these kind of courses are kept to make sure you to understand. Again, the same thing again, empathy for students. Same thing I'm saying again, you have to empathize with them, you understand the difficulties that they are facing, the hardship that they are facing. If not, you won't be able to be successful. Okay. Any questions so far? Am I boring you? No? The hardship you're mentioning, are you, does that just mean academic? It can be everything. It can be everything uh, I was talking to one, one of my friends He was saying this one What he was teaching he, He's Because he's done a bit of teaching Because he's a, he's a chaplain now So he goes This one guy in class One student in class Sorry for the slang One, one student in class And he just wouldn't understand it. Every day the same things go over I, I, he's, I tried all my techniques and skills That I learned in, this, this, in my chaplaincy With teaching And I'm just getting frustrated Why is this guy not understanding I just try everything And a couple of weeks later I realized dyslexic So so it's so many things Now if you're dyslexic Now you can so Everything changes So now you have Now you have to empathize with him Some, Sometimes in the olden days That's why uh, A lot of them people say People used to say Oh these are dumpsy students Because they want glasses So maybe a student can't see the board But they're scared They can't see They don't know What is right vision So they weren't able to So in any aspect Okay And we discuss more of the empathy In terms of as Emotional empathy later on But here I'm talking about Ability But everywhere Basically a lot of this is about empathy being able to put yourself in their shoes and understand where, the, where they're coming from. Yeah.
Everybody with me so far? Any questions? Okay. Yeah, normally it's quite boring. There's, there's, a, there's a term called uh, death by PowerPoint. Have you heard that before? That's so boring PowerPoint presentation that sometimes like, it's got a death by PowerPoint. It's bore you to death. Okay. I've been, I've been through a few of those and I kind of sneaked out somehow. So if you sneak out, I won't, I won't embarrass you because I know you're probably getting bored of my, 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 uh, my torture. Delivery. It's very important. Obviously, you, you've, you've prepared. You've, you've got the material re correct. You've got... How do you deliver this? Now, before we move on, I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to, don't write this down. Just, I want you to memorize this. Thick wall it T of I'm not going to pretend I know what that word is but it's something mir or whatever it is is that a word? I don't know sees knots and trained so I'll give you one, one minute you're not going to memorize any of this I'm not going to give you a minute because it's time because nobody's going to memorize it you, you, you're just going to waste your time but you've got to learn that yeah that's a part of the exercise I don't got time you're not going to memorize it and you know we're going to all fail at the end but that's the a, that's a, that's a whole procedure you're going to try to memorize it you're going to fail and I'll tell you why but that's so pretend you learned it for two minutes yeah you didn't learn it right go ahead so to keep that in back of your mind, right? So that's, we can just come back to that at the end. Another very important thing is speed of speech. The speed of speech. And you're laughing at me, going, myself, you talk so fast yourself and you want to give us no see and speaking slowly. <laughs> but this is how I am now. Imagine how I was before. So I've tried somehow. I still, sometimes when I get too excited, I start speaking quickly. My accent comes in. I eat a few words up. But even before then, so imagine how I was then. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what happened. So hush up. Uh, so when I was a kid in Barbados, right, from Barbados, in Barbados, like different cultures have different things. So in Barbados, a nickname culture is like, Latana Bazubil Al Qab, there's even, there's no Zul Nahini, there's no, that I doesn't exist in Barbados. Everybody's got a nickname. So everybody's got a nickname. Like people, you don't even know their nicknames, you don't even know their real names. That's how common. So uh, my, brother used to play, my brother used to play cricket. So I went as a little kid, my dad, my dad used to take me to watch my brother play cricket. So I used to be in a dressing room with a little kid, like five years old, playing on the gloves and the bat and have the helmet on and all that. So they didn't use mind, but I used to be in my brother's dressing room. So he just asked me, what's, what's your name? I said, so far, I said, Hashim. What? Hashim. And obviously Hashim is an Arabic name and the Barbadian, so you go, Hashim. So then from that day on, my brother's friends would call me Hashim. Because I speak so fast, so they can't get my name pronounced properly. Now, when I started teaching, in, I started teaching in one place. So I was teaching a book, and when I read that Jeff Petty's book, Teaching Today, one of the things he mentions about recording yourself and trying to, so I thought, let me try this, I took permission. I put uh, one of those, you know, the old time days when you had the phone, didn't have the recorder. So I had to buy one of those recorders and put it on, I bought it, recorded myself and plugged it out, plugged it into the computer, USB and all that, long time ago, right? And wallahi, I was like, huh? What? What am I saying? I can't, I can't understand myself. I was speaking so fast. And I said, my students in class, how did they understand me? I, I, I was struggling to figure out what I'm, what I'm saying. So no matter how much mutala you do, how much preparation you do, how knowledgeable you think you may be, if you can't deliver anything properly, what's the point? You can sing. And this, they have mentioned this before. I said, even I speak fast now, I try. I said, I'm saying all of these things, and I do it, I'm greater than thou. And it's just telling you what you're supposed to do. Sometimes I can't do it myself, sometimes the bad habits kick in. But anyways, I try to. So imagine how it was then. But anyways, so they say that when you had students with learning disabilities, they find things difficult to learn. Just by halving the speed, when you just half the speed you talk, what happens? The retention is what? How much more percent? 25? Another guess? 50? 100. 100% 100. 100 more retention on average by speaking slowly. We become so impatient nowadays that everything I watch on YouTube is two times the speed because I don't have time to watch one time speed. But when you speak slowly, the retention is, is much more. That's one of the main important points. Okay, make sure. And this is the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana fi kalami Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was very slow and very leisurely and distinct. And his kalam was Faslan Yafhamuhu Kullu man Yasmahu. Whoever whoever heard him could clearly understand his differentiation between the letters. Okay. So if you speak fast like me, it's a bid'ah. Okay. He could even count his words. That's how clearly he used to speak. Okay. Another important thing is repetition. When you repeat something, it stays in your memory. So theoretically, the only two things that stick in your memory. One is something which is uh, very important emotionally. 
or embarrassing, but it's important. Well, it's, 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 it hits home emotionally. For example, uh, date of birth, death, marriage. And if you don't remember your mar marriage anniversary, then you're in a bit of trouble. That happens to me quite often. But yeah, but something like that happen, you forget things. But if it's important, you remember these things. Did somebody passed away? Did somebody died? Did something really important happen? And, but that's uh, abnormal. Normally, what's the third, second thing? When it's repeated. That's what the hadith said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he wanted somebody to understand something, he would say three times. So again, the Prophet didn't have all of these words about this is repetition theory and all that, but Rabbi Asana Ta'dibi. So all of these things you can find, but the wording terminologies came out later on. The ta'lim, the actual concept was there itself from before. So when you repeat something, that's why you have muraja'ah, you have muraja'ah in, in hivs, you have muraja'ah in your kutub. Okay. So remembering depends on frequency and recency. The more frequent it is and the more recent it is, you remember it. Now this is very, this is very interesting. A, anybody know, what's his name? Tony Buzan. Anybody know of Tony Buzan? No? This was a memory, ex, memory expert. He's got an interesting book. I did, it was quite useful for me the first couple of pages, but after that I got a bit bored. I found a way he taught us to memorize things. It was even more difficult than normal, memorizing it normally, but that's my opinion. But anyways, but here this one graph I got from this book is very interesting. Yeah. So what you see, right. So if you look at it, what he's saying here, when you teach something, that's your recall. Yeah, where the red line is. So if I, if I tell you something today, what's going to happen? You remember it, hopefully, if you're listening, you're not sleeping. And then what happens? Eventually, you forget it and it just, you forget. If you recall, if you re recall that thing again in 10 minutes' time, what happens then? Instead of going, you, 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 it's in your mind, instead of going off, it stays in your mind a bit longer. And then for that to be forgotten, it takes a bit longer than the first one. So instead of forgetting what I said today, in two, in two days' time, if you repeat it again at the end or you have a recap, you're probably forgetting about three, four days' time. But if, if the next day you repeat that again, well, this is what he decides you're going to have a, a takarar of, the, of this. What happens then? It stays in my memory longer and you forget it at a slower pace. If you go again, the same thing, one week time, what happens? It stays in memory longer and the amount you forget is also less. And if you do it after one month, six months, then it goes into your mind and it stays there quite permanently. And this same concept is applied in the hips. So, uh, this is what we do now, Marjorie. So obviously, everybody's different. I can't tell you what to do, but it's like a, it's like a guide. Like what we do is that we, we say, after every class, recap. Five minutes, three minutes, just recap. In question form, in summary form, in graph form, in joke form, in quiz form. Somehow or the other, recap. That's the, that's the 10 minute done, isn't it? The next day, before class starts, review it. Yeah. Then once a week, every two weeks, what do you have? A little test, a little revision. And then every month you have like a kind of, kind of assessment. And then you have the exams. So this is a suggestion. I mean, like obviously you have to tailor it to however you do. But this is very important. The, the, the concept here is repetition. In any some, some form or the other, make sure things are repeated. Just because they've... And know what happens here sometimes? We kind of think... Even we get, because what happens sometimes, you know what happens? Is that if you're a good teacher, you're passionate, again, same thing, the paradox. When you're a good teacher, you're passionate, you prepare well, you want to deliver a lot of material. So then you keep on, so then no, anyways, then you go ahead. You can teach more and more. So you're doing well, you, you, because you're passionate and you want to teach a lot, you end up teaching too much. So take the time out and just recap. And we're not only listening to the lessons because, so they learn it or they're weak. And if after two weeks or three weeks you, you say, oh, they, they know it anyways, they learn it anyways, I don't need to listen to them. That's not why we listen to them. We listen to them or we repeat it in class somehow or the other for their own memory. Not because, oh, they're good students or bad students, so they, they learn it, they don't learn it. Or they don't learn at home. Even if they learn at home, if you do it in class, it helps their memory. That makes sense? So somehow or the other, repetition. This is, this is a suggestion that he has put forward. But the main concept is repetition in some form or the other at, at, at relevant intervals. Okay. Okay? Everybody with me? Any other questions? No? Everybody, everything smooth so far? Another thing as well we have here is estimation. As I said again, because of your past, teachers usually tend or have a habit or a tendency to overestimate the student's current ability. If in the future, your students can become super, super wonderful, better than us. I'll discuss that later on. But primarily, don't overestimate how much you've understood. You just, you, you tend to overestimate generally how good I've taught, 
how much they've understood and you just think, oh, they've understood. Always double check that they, what they have learned is what you actually taught them, what they've understood. So many things that's misunderstood. misunderstood. So they're not dumb, but you can easily misunderstand something. You, cannot, you can easily have misunderstood something. So don't overestimate how much they've understood. That's very important. Sometimes too much material, too quickly, uh, this, this, this rushing through it, that is very easy. It's easy for you, but be sympathetic to them. Okay? And it's better, in my opinion, as I said, you can differ with me, you can have your own, your own experiences and your disagreements. But my, my personal opinion is, you, but you rather deliver content at a slower speed than too quickly. What will happen? Let me give an example. If you, if you deliver, if you cover a whole book in a year, you cover how much percent? 100% of the book. How much did you recall? 10%. Why? Because you were ripping it. That's a lesser slang. You were going too fast. Correct? If you covered 50% of the book at a slower speed, but the retention was better, and they retain, retain how much? 25%. So at the end of the day, obviously you have to look at your syllabus and everything, but just generally speaking, is, what, is it better to teach 10, 100% where they don't, only 10% is recalled? Or teach a less amount where 25% is recalled? So sometimes yes, you, want, you get passionate, you want to do a lot, but you have to focus up. Have they understood? Are they with me? Are they understanding? Have I not lost them? Is it too much for them? And very, very important. Okay. And if they get bored, you realize that it's too easy for them. Straight away, you learn the face that they start playing with the toes. They start, you know, talking. You know straight away, this is, they're bored and it's easy for them. But when it's fast, sometimes they just daydream or they just, they just give up. So it's very important. One of the, yes, next part here is too much new material. Has Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu makatha ala surat al-Baqarah thamaniya sinina yata'allamuha. Eight years in surat al-Baqarah. So I'm not saying to do Surah Baqarah in eight years. What I'm saying is, they understood the concept that too much new material is not important. At the, relative, the pace is not important. The depth is important. So this is one of the m- most common mistakes I myself made. And I've noticed the teachers making as well is that too much new material too quickly. You cover too much too quickly. 